Um, you know, here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. I want to know where your passion for, for filmmaking kind of came from, led you on this journey as being an actress, producer, director, you know? Yeah, and you started apparently at a young age too, you know? Yeah, I mean, I started, I'm born and raised in Southern California in a smaller town called Whittier. And um, I think just being so close to Los Angeles, it was pretty, it was, it was pretty full on at a, at a young age. My late godmother was on the board for the Academy. So she did a lot of cool movies um, as, as a, the, like the he head of hair department. So growing up, I was always on set with her. And as I got older, she really saw how sincere that I was with acting and just being a storyteller. Cause when I was younger, I thought it was just going to be an acting thing. And I didn't really know what my true calling was because I was still, I think I was still so young and naive and she really um, opened up a lot of opportunities and she would take me to the Academy to vote. I got to meet all of her friends who were really influential in Hollywood. So I was very blessed that she saw something in me and believed in me and my brother to really um, do what she could, you know? So started at, started at a young age in front of the camera. I did a lot of print work and, and a lot of, um, just yeah i mean anything that i could yeah, book so at the time campaigns for mcdonald's and disney that's impressive uh, yeah, while you're seven yeah yeah it was a lot of fun and um i had a little bit of luck yeah. at a young age and i and, I, and I, being on set i think i had the, the the bug bit me and i knew i wanted to do something long term i think um i just kind of felt it and and um so i started getting into acting class and doing that whole thing but i saw that young actors were like slightly different. They were so mature and they were so professional. And I knew that it, I couldn't really relate to that. And so I chose to, and think that, you know, I'd support a, a very supportive mom. She was like, okay. So I said, mom, I just want to go to, I just want to grow up. So I want to pull out and I just want to have a normal upbringing. And then because That's when smart, I'm older, actually. yeah. And it's like, what, what did I know? Shoot. And, um, so, so I just had a totally no normal upbringing. And then once I got my driver's license, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And I would do the commute and stuff like that. And then went to, went to college for a year and I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And so um, moved to LA and I never looked back. Very cool. Yeah, I love going into Whittier when I still lived out there. It used to be a, uh, it used to be an amazing comic shop that did events right on that Main Street area. Uptown Whittier. Uptown Whittier. It's pretty iconic. Yeah, so what was the name of your godmother? Because I used to cover the hair and makeup uh, guild awards red carpet every year. So her name was Ellie Elliot. Mm. Sounds familiar. So yeah, she passed away. She passed away a bit ago um, due to cancer, and she went pretty quickly. So that was that was that was hard. Um, but I've remained really really close to her best friends, mm. and uh, her best friends is you know, they're extended family to me. So um, hopefully I'll make her proud. Oh, I'm sure you, you are. I mean, impressive uh, resume so far at MDB. Um, I asked that, I mean, we already talked about this before we started recording, but I'm a huge uh, Marvel dork and you were in uh, Thor Ragnarok, um, one of the Asgardian females. Can you talk about what it was like working on set? You know, did you actually get to see yourself in the movie at all? Or, cause I know there's so many extras, you know? And so. It was, it was crazy. And it was it kind of all happened just just by chance. And uh, um, I'm, I'm really good friends with Lou. He's one of the co-presidents over at Marvel and it just kind of all came together. And they, they did reshoots at the studio in Warner Brothers. And at the time I didn't even know what it was, but you know, I fit the profile of what they needed, signed up for it because I, I just think having an open mentality and saying yes, you don't always have to see what's gonna happen, but just say yes, because if somebody's interested or life is presenting you something. It's like that movie with Jim Carrey, Yes Man. Like if you just start yeah, saying, yeah. I so I went, I went and then full on, it was, they're like, okay, so this is, this is for Thor. And I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. So um, it was cool. It was really cool because their budgets are so massive and you know, they shoot most of this stuff down in, um, well, everywhere. They shoot yeah, in, well, in the that movie was posted down in Australia, I think. So. In Australia. And that's where I am currently right now. So I, okay. I I'm pretty, pretty aware. So it's cra it was crazy. They had like a massive green screen and they just needed to add a, a, an insert shot. And there was just a bunch of, you know, m actors really who wanted to be a part of it. And um, I didn't think, I didn't think I was gonna like really be shown and stuff like that. But because of the green screen, they had to mix and match everybody and like kind of move everybody around because digitally they were gonna input 
you know, make it look like a mass, massive. And um, yeah, so it was cool working with Taika and he put me like right front and center. And I, I, I really didn't think too much of it. And full on, I just like, it turned into something. And I was like, okay. When I got text messages from lots of people saying, you didn't tell me that you did something for Thor. And I was like, wait, I'm gonna have to see, <laughs> I'm gonna have to see this. So, um, so what seed was I, it that you were in? it's um it's it's the uh it's you have to watch it i'll send you i'll send it to you so you don't have to watch the whole thing and it made me laugh it just made it fun for me to be able to play you know what i mean like growing up you want to you just want to be able to play you want to play with your friends you want to be able to be creative and that was just really cool to see hollywood at the mass scale like it doesn't get bigger than i don't think it gets bigger oh, we're, than we're, disney we're a learning experience you know so, as a filmmaker yourself too it was really cool. It was really, it was a cool moment for sure. Cool. And it's even cooler that our writer director, Jacob Johnson, he worked at Marvel for almost eight years. So he, he's a little, he's a prodigy. I love Jacob. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Let's get into a dream catcher. It looks <laughs> like this amazing, like horror movie that takes place at like some underground rave. And I assume it's in LA and the, Someone's using the DJ's mask to kill other people. We don't know who's doing it, so. Don't know, you have to, you have to watch Learn it. And uh, talk about how this film got put together. You know, I was in Ibiza, Spain, and um, our last movie that my brother and I worked on, that was 2015. And so, um, and we executive produced it with Wes Craven, who- oh, wow. um, that's, that's Yeah. What, it was, what, what did you work with Wes Craven with? Oh yes. Wow. And, and it was really cool because Oz Perkins, you know, co-wrote in Oz Perkins, his dad is the famous Anthony Perkins who did Psycho. Um, so there was just a lot of really cool people that came together. And I mean, Wes setting the, setting the tone and everybody just being such fans of him. It was a really wonderful experience. Something that you could only, you could only like a film school, you wouldn't be able to teach that experience. You have to live it and um so yeah so long story short i was in ibiza and i took a lot of time off just spending time on my personal life and i got really inspired seeing have you ever been to have you ever been to ibiza no no i um i i had never that was my first time and just seeing the day life and the night life and i'm like wow there's a whole world like this whole edm music and music lovers it's a whole thing and it, i was really kind of impressed like i was just really into it and I knew that I knew nothing about it. So I felt like a complete fish, you know, fish out of water. Um, but I, I, I thought that there's something there because they're so passionate in like the beats per minutes and like what the DJs do and like how they really communicate to their fans. Like there's a whole process and there's a reason why the fan base is so tuned in. Um, and there's a reason why people like to go to these music, music festivals because they're communicating through music. And so I told my brother and then I told him, I walked, when I came home, I'm like, we've, we're doing another movie. And he's like, what? And he's like, okay. So he called Jacob and we, we were, we'd been developing projects with Jacob since 2013, 2014, um, even though he's still working at Marvel. And Brandon's like, hey, all right, we're doing this. And I'm like, I got, I got the location. You know, I love the name Dreamcatcher and I want to do an ensemble. And I think I really want to do, I think it'd be cool to do like sort of an homage to Wes, you know? I see. I can see how this all got came from your personal life into this. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, like your friends too and stuff or. Uh, no, we're very, prof very professional in that sense. I mean, everybody that we hired, including the crew, we would all the, every, all the department heads, we, we would see at least three to five people minimum. Um, and we always believe the best person wins and whatever's best for the film, um, we would go with to just make sure that, cause it's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to make a picture that um, we don't want to, we don't want to ruin it too much. So um, yeah. <laughs> we, we still put all the actors through the casting process and then the mix and match and what have you was so cool. It was a really cool process because it's all chemistry. When you do an ensemble, mm -hmm. it's a whole nother thing because you're managing a lot of people. And you shoot, shoot this film in um, Los Angeles. Oh, we shot the whole. We shot, 
Yeah. So the warehouse like, where let we talked to some filmmaker, I'd be like, oh, it's really cool you got to shoot in Mexico. They're like, oh, that was Malibu. And I was like, oh, well, oh. Cool me, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, we know we didn't. We 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 should really shot in LA. We threw a we, we rented this huge warehouse downtown LA, like a yeah, 65. It looked like downtown. That's why I said that. <laughs> it was cool. And we full on threw a huge party, like full on called my friend who's got um, an amazing event production company. And he, I was at Evan, my brother and I, we've been throwing parties like just in life in general. So having all the relationships being in LA for so long, I, I, I picked up my, the, I would pick up the phone for those types of uh, favors. And, and I was like, we're, we got to get the club scene right. Or, um, and that's what a lot of our sort of mentors told us, like, look, you guys have to crush it with this club scene. Absolutely. Cause people yeah. can smell that or just see that it's like, oh, it's not real. They're, and then they're tuned out right at that point, you know, the film. So. Yeah. And Jeff Allen Jones, who is our um, music, just he, he's a sound designer. He's amazing. Like he's so, he's so um, good. And he was explaining to us that, you know, most films kind of like they kind of phone it in and then they just lay the sound for something like that. He's like, they would just lay it on top. So it's very flat. And so what he wanted to do, and he explained it to us, and I really appreciate him doing that, was he wanted the music to be in the movie. Like, it, so he had a whole process. So when you, you know, for, for those of you who tune in, once it comes out March 5th, crank it up, because the design, and, and preferably if you have surround sound, crank it up because the sound was so thought out that um, we're really proud of it. Like we should, we, we're really proud of uh, what well, the whole process, but the music is is uh, is really cool. And it's all original. And uh, I think we we sort of talked about this before we started recording, but you might be doing a soundtrack the uh, the release day too. Or? Yeah, yeah. So we're um we're we're talking to um some some really cool independent labels that are interested, and they're really interested and so passionate. Um, one of our one of our one of our musicians, her name's Eva Shaw. And she's so cool. I mean, she started out as a supermodel and decided that she loved music. And so she went, she went that direction and she's amazing. Like she, 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 she jumped on from the beginning, um, really open-minded saying, Hey guys, like, you know, this sounds pretty cool. Like I have a feeling and, um, she's been amazing and it's kind of like trickled effect. Uh, we started pulling in really good, EDM artist who we thought, but it, it's all, it also has to make sense for the film. So tonally speaking, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a whole nother thing. And um, so, yeah, so we have like, I want to say 10 to 15 original songs in the, in there. So we're like, let's do old school style since that's oh, kind of been the, the theme. That. Movies used to do soundtracks all the time. I mean, like the crow was like one of my all time favorites, you know, and I awesome. mean, I understand it doesn't sell like it used to, but it's cool mm -hmm. that you guys are actually considering that, you know? just just the old school mentality of like because it's a very like 90s type film even though it's current day it's you could see the influence written all over it and you know back in the day i used to like love going to the record stores and and, and listening to the soundtrack you're like you know it, it was just a whole different way of living and and so we're like we are in a position as independent filmmakers to kind of do whatever we want so we're we're really experimenting a lot and we're having so much fun in the process of doing so mm -hmm. well besides the soundtrack one thing i would love to be able to get my hands on is the iconic mask that's in this movie that dj <laughs> dreamcatcher we well, who knows is actually wearing uh is this going to be who actually designed it actually his name is Josh. I forget his last name. Terrible of me. Um, so Jacob, our writer director, he again going back to the Marvel, he comes with an army. He's made. He's got such a great relationship in town. Like people really are rooting for him. This is his directorial debut. So the guy who draw, you know, he he went through the whole process with Jacob. So I've got like really cool images and sketches of this is what we're gonna do. And he would sketch like, I think like he started out with eight different ideas, like concept and treated it just like as if it was a Marvel movie. So once Jacob and him really figured out the look, then they, um, then we're like, okay, so he developed it even more. So we've got really cool 3D, like artistic looking images that will be coming out um, in the next couple of weeks. And then the manufacturer place physically made it. So we've got these two cool, 
like really cool mask. Um, and we're talking, we're talking about maybe um, ha having it come out for, for Halloween and, and doing oh, some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they said the people that made them also made stuff for Guardians of the Galaxy movie or ride. I can't remember which one. Yeah. Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, a ton, a ton of, um, I should get the names for you. Terrible of me to not have this off the, off the top of my head. It's a great question that you ask and I should have known because you're such a Disney fan. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I love it. So yeah, maybe you could have something where like, I always liked like these Blu-ray stuff where it was like, like, I think there was one that was like a Batman mask and it would unfold and then the, the DVDs and Blu-rays would be inside. I could see something like this being down the road if you ever do like a special edition, like Blu-ray or DVD, you know, with the mask or something. You know? I love, I love how you're totally like speaking the same language because that's what we're talking about. We're all, we're all such like, I love it. Well, cool. Like uh, dark. It's Come like that, uh, VOD, what, March 4th or 3rd? I can't remember. March 5th. March yes, 5th. Friday, Friday, March 5th. So everybody go see it. And um, I can't wait. I'm really excited. It's been, you know, it was a rough year and we our release date got pushed back four times. So we've had to really be patient. And um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm very grateful for this to come out. And um, I'm, I'm really pumped. You know, who has a movie coming out in the middle of a global pandemic that's oh, crazy well mm -hmm. I, I i tell uh, everyone from musicians to filmmakers thank you so much for continuing your art because you know we still need some new art new stuff to look forward to even with music or movies so thank oh, you oh my gosh totally <laughs> they don't they don't say starving artists for no reason so anytime you can support artists um especially indie like anything indie i just i love because you know, they don't have the, the checklist that, you know, the, the big labels, if it's music, it's the, it's the huge record labels. If it's movies, it's the studios. And granted, everybody's always doing the best that they can. However, you kind of can lose some creative um, creativity because there's so much, so many requirements, you know, that need to be met. So for us, we're so stoked to let Dreamcatcher fly out into the world because we have our fingertips all over it. Oh, I love everyone out support independent films Dreamcatcher looks so good um, before I let you go is there anything in the works that you're allowed to talk about or yeah I mean um, we're already talking about the sequel um, which I think could be yeah everything is like bigger better uh, on when I say better like just every like the whole world continues there's a really cool twist at the end which we're really um, we're very experimental with it so um, we would, we would continue telling the story. And we also have another uh, college murder mystery that we created in 2000, since 2013. Um, but that's more in the, that's more in the, that, that takes you more into like Rosemary's Baby or The Skulls. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's, it's still in the same like young adult world, but it's, it's different. Um, yeah, so we're, we're just, kind of going with it day to day right now and uh, keeping our eyes open and um, see, seeing where, where the wind kind of blows us next. Gotcha. Uh, are you on social media or anything? We can follow your journey going forward. Yes, I am. It's at Crystal Veda, Crystal with a K, V-A-Y-D-A. -A. Um, Instagram, I'm better, so much better at. Twitter, I try, but I'm just always working. Like I'm always yeah. researching. It's hard. I'm the same way. I, 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 I'm good at putting stuff on Twitter, but Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know. It's just, it's a lot, but I know that Twitter. Either editing or doing social media. It's like, you know. It's hard, but then at the same time, you kind of, you kind of, you have to like participate because if not, no, everyone, so it's just, yeah. yeah, I'm so I'm sleeping a lot less hours these days to make sure that, you know, everything. But the, the main thing is that, look, we got Samuel Goldwyn Films, who doesn't even do horror releasing this they just got nominated for an oscar golden globe i mean they're crushing it and we've got we've got an amazing district they're so behind us on this like they're really and um we might actually have it come out in drive-in theaters in the in the u.s oh that would be perfect movie for a drive-in theater yeah so so knock on wood so knock on wood so a lot of things are pending and um we just have to kind of go with the flow because of the pandemic all right, well, I look forward to seeing what other projects you got down the road. We'll be talking then, all right? Yeah, thanks, Steven. You're awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.